I've been involved with Hastings Creek for a long, long time. It goes back 40 years ago, actually. I met an elderly gentleman at the PNE. He saw my fish and wildlife hat on and he came up and we struck up a conversation and, and he told me about a creek that once ran close to where we stood that day and he told me how as a boy back around 1900 he used to fish for salmon at the creek's outlet just around the corner in New Brighton Park. So I never saw him again after that day but our conversation sparked an interest in that creek that I've carried ever since. So I tried to learn everything I could about it. And I found out that the very last part of the creek was paved over in about 1930. And I thought that was a, a shame. But in the 1990s, there was some initial talk about naturalizing the PE. Uh, and as I looked at the path that the creek used to follow, how it went through the PE and then it curled its way down through New Brighton. I thought there was certainly the potential to daylight that creek, to restore it, to regenerate it. And when they first started talking about naturalizing the PE, I saw that as an opportunity. So that's where the discussion took place, that's where it was initiated. And by about 1997, the city agreed that that was a positive thing to work towards. And they came up with a long term plan that would see that unfold over the next uh, 20 or 30 years. The very first phase of the project actually started with the daylighting of the Headwater Lake, what we call the sanctuary in the p &E. But then in terms of actually daylighting the creek, there are three stages involved. We've just seen the completion of stage one, the daylighting through Creekway Park. The next stage, we'll see the creek actually daylighted all the way down to the harbor which I think is really exciting. And I do believe if the creek is designed properly that that'll set the stage for getting salmon back into that system within the next several years, which uh, uh, I've seen that happen elsewhere. There's no reason why that couldn't happen on Hastings Creek. And then the next stage will be the final stage, which will link the creek that's been opened in, in Creekway Park. It will actually link it with the sanctuary. And once that occurs, then the creek will have been daylighted pretty much along its entire historic stretch, which is pretty exciting, about 1.3 kilometers. And once again, that's something in an urban setting you just don't see very often. So I think what's happening with Hastings Creek is not only capturing the imagination of a lot of people in Vancouver, of a lot of people in the Lower Mainland, but it's a project that's also being watched by, by planners in many other cities around the world. I think of the lost streams in Vancouver, you know, the fact that more than 50 of them were culverted and paved over and now run as lifeless dead waterways under our streets, under our sidewalks. On one hand, I think that's such a shame, but if it's possible through redevelopment where we can get some of those back, uh, you know, I, I think that's just the ultimate in river restoration. I think it just goes to show that we should never give up on any waterway and if there's a will, a desire and a plan is put in place that we can turn things around and uh, uh, I'm quite excited to think that that's going to be the case for Hastings Creek.